for those that are like joining us, this is uh, the new season of the playground and we thought it appropriate to start the season with this. Um, I will give all credit to my producer, Teresa Goss, who came up with this great idea. And um, I thought, okay, we need to get on this like right away. So um, first of all, thank you, Boss Goss. Really appreciate it. <laughs> you are and quite thank welcome. You, thank you, thank you. And thank you guys for being here. Um, as, as we said before, this is a, a, a kind of a tribute to Tommy DeBards, um, our original bass player. <clears throat> There's been a lot said about Tommy, um, his musicianship, his, his friendship, his, his, his just all around awesomeness. And I really wanted to, to get with the guys who've worked with him both in the studio and, you know, again, as friends or whatever, and share our stories as far as like what it was like to work with Tommy. Going back to the beginning, and you'll see that there are some people here who knew Tommy since before Switch. So um, since he was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> That's smart. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, and if you don't mind, and we're going to go this, but I, I just want to start out by saying when I, when I first met Tommy, um, when he first, when I heard him play bass, I told Tommy like back then, and I, you, you've probably heard me, the guys here pro have probably heard me say this. I always thought Tommy DeBarge was going to be like one of those bass legends up there with like Larry Graham and, and, and Lewis Johnson. I could totally see him back then on the cover of like bass player magazines or whatever and give him like crazy, crazy interviews as far as like his technique, his playing or whatever. Right. I thought Tommy was that good. And I mean, him in the studio, um, his bass playing was totally melodic and so tasty. I mean, just some of the ideas that he came up with was just just amazing, amazing. Um, I, I have a lot to say and I'm not gonna waste, you know, uh, uh, you know, you guys have a lot to say as well. So with yeah. that, I'm just gonna start with that and leave the floor open to you all. So anybody, go. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, let me go. <laughs> please, please. This, this is Andrew this... Brown. Yeah. Andrew, um, thank you. Yeah. Tommy was, of course, my, my brother-in-law. He married my sister, April. Um, they have four kids together. And um, I actually introduced him to his first wife, Ducky. Um, they have oh, four kids together then, cool. too. Yes, yes, I did. So I was kind of instrumental in all them kitty boos around. So, <laughs> you know, but, but you know, check this out. You know, I enjoyed when when uh, you, Eddie, and Philip, when y'all were talking about your pre-switch <laughs> thing, you know, when you guys were back in Ohio and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. just like with us, it's three of us in here right now. I'm talking about MC, Greg, and myself. We met grade school, Henry School. Okay? Ooh, we wow. were grade school, okay? And it's like, we all were like, oh, you play an instrument, you play an instrument, things like that, you know? And that's how we really started connecting, of course. That's how far back we go. Mm -hmm. And then we were, of course, we would started playing in bands with each other all over Grand Rapids and stuff. And so when we knew Andre Adney, which is the cousin to the DeBarges, because the DeBarges come from, you know, the Adney family. So we're all together and we're playing in clubs and we playing a little bit in church. You know, I guess we were the heathens, you know what I mean? We were, playing, <laughs> <laughs> we were doing both Thank things. You. MC know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And, and so we're getting to be known in the city for playing in all these bands, okay? This was probably in the latter 60s, all right? And oh. I'm walking on... Help me out, guys. Was it Benjamin or uh, what was the street that they lived on? 616 Giddings. 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 Okay, Giddings. <laughs> okay. Dead of winter. You know, we didn't have no cars. We, we kids, we walking in the snow and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm walking in like knee high snow. Right. And coming from a rehearsal, and I see this guy running to me full steam. Hey, oh. man. Hey, and I'm looking, <laughs> and I'm saying, well, I said, this guy, his hair was all out like this, no shirt on, okay? A In the dead of, of winter. A dead of winter now, okay? Dead of winter, no, uh, no shirt, pants on, but had on some boots, okay? <laughs> he, he's running at me full steam. Philip, he's running at me with a bass in his hand. Oh, you know, yeah. and he, <laughs> wait a minute. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Boots, pants, no shirt, and a base. No shirt and a, and a dead winner. Tommy DeBarge. And a winner. So I was going to say, somehow be... that sounds like Tommy DeBarge. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so From the very beginning. Come out of house. You know, he must have saw he must have saw me and came out of his house and was running towards me to me. Hey, man, I play bass. I play bass like that. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. He run <laughs> he look like a little Hispanic dude, you know. And so he starts playing bass right in front of my face. He just put pop to pop. He's playing. And I said, boy, this boy can play. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm looking yeah. at him. And so that's how I first met Tom. Okay. He was the first DeBarge that I met was Tommy. Mm -hmm. And then I invited him to the shows we were doing because, you know, they, they were out of the church. So uh, the Pentecostal network didn't really want them playing in the, in, you know, in the clubs, right. but Tommy would come and play with us just like Bobby would come out. Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. Bobby mm -hmm. would come out and do sessions. I mean, with us too, at rehearsals and things like that. But Drew, how old was Tommy? How old, how old was he then? About? Wow, Tommy is was two years younger than me, so he's uh, sixty five, no, sixty six, like sixty four, something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, when he passed. So that was back in the latter sixties. Wow. That, okay. 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 So that's how my first. Ago. He was the first barge I met. Elementary and, school. Yes, we wow. were like, dude, we were. We were doing all type of music and, and Tommy always could play, okay? Tommy mm -hmm. always could play bass. When he scared us one time, and share this one when he, with you too, it was after we had did the Gemini tour, okay? So this was probably in the latter 80s, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but the Gemini tour being? Uh, the, uh, with L. Thank you. L's Gemini tour, it was the last tour that he did and it was the last album he did with Motown, okay? So we were out doing it. Remember when we did the Arsenio Hall show and everything else? We, right. Remember that? Did all the Arsenio Hall. We came back to Grand Rapids. Him and Chico were, were in a car. They had went to Detroit and they were coming back and it was dead of winter. You know what I'm getting ready to say, okay? The car lost control and it flipped oh, over. Flipped over. Yep. And and Tommy lost consciousness and his hand went out of the window and the oh. car rolled on it oh. and crushed yeah. his hand. Okay. And it his hand, it was like a big gash in here like this. And we didn't think Tommy was gonna ever play ever bass. Play again. That's right. I remember, remember I that remember too. They yeah. grabbed from his leg, they grafted all this back in, and we still were like going, man, I don't know if Tommy gonna be able to do. Tommy just got to playing, got to rehearsing. I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this, man. You know? That's Tommy. Unbelievable. He mm -hmm. started playing bass better than before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't and believe if, it. If, if I remember correctly to that point, um, Elder Barges, you were at well, was after the accident, <laughs> correct? So if anybody wants to hear how Tommy sounded after that accident, listen to that record because he killed it. Yeah, killed it. And if I can interject for a second, yeah. that's when yeah, I please. really realized that Tommy DeBarge was born with roach blood. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what that roach blood is? When the lights right. come on, here they come. You can right. see <laughs> them, but they won't die. Okay, right. anyway, excuse me. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. 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 See, Greg, Greg, he, he should have been the comedian part, too. You know? Oh, we always say that. We the always comedian say that. part going on, you know? <laughs> yeah. And always yeah. kept us rolling. But Tommy was always a character. Yeah. You know he what I mean? funny. Come on, Drew. Tommy, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Tommy would come in and be saying some crazy stuff. And then when he get to playing bass, you look and you say, wait a minute. Wait, this, we're, this, right, right, right. This boy <laughs> Right, and you're right. Tommy would come with with some off the wall stuff like, "What? Yes, <laughs> what? Yes, yes." And, 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 and then wait a minute. You know, I had this. I had this car that was um, I got when I first came in L.A. It was it was like a Buick Century, and it was kind of <laughs> yellow, and it had um, white interior. Oh lord! And so Tommy called it the Wild and Loud. 
He called wild my loud. father wild and loud. Wild he said, loud. Yeah, G, let's go and ride wild with loud. the wild and loud. <laughs> so after a while, he goes and gets the Alpha for Romero. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, please, <laughs> please. With that. I, I told my Greg, son, Philip, you don't MC, need this car. Jody. Well, oh, okay, let me quickly oh. share this and then I'll get back out of here. No, no, do it. no, I no this, please. I repeat this story often about when Tommy got that damn Alfa Romero. Him and Bobby both had them Alfa Romero. Mm -hmm. yes. And mm -hmm. Tommy would get stopped by the police all the time up mm -hmm. and down the freeway speeding like he didn't know what he had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time being with him and one of the police told him, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy asked the police, do you know who I am? <laughs> police said, yeah, you the guy about to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> And you remember when he first drove up with that? I mean, we were only getting like so much money from Motown. There was no way he could right. afford that car. And we right. were all like, Tommy, really? You can't afford this. No, no, man. I, I'm no, I could I could do this. I could do and, that. and it was convertible too. Right, yes. right. It was beautiful. Yes. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. beautiful. Way outside of his budget. A, oh, then he run it into a house or something where he after what did he have it a year? How long did he, he have yeah. a car? <laughs> No, he didn't have I don't believe it was a year. Okay, y'all over right? one other part. Bobby had an Alfa Romero too. Both of them bought new Alfa Romero that year. Within the, what? Within a year, right? Yeah. Wow. wow. Was okay. gone. But you yeah. know, man, Tommy was such a lovable guy. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Tommy, yeah. you would you would say, doggone it, Tommy. He got me in so much mess. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like going, Tommy, please. We could all we could all tell those stories. <laughs> but you yeah. loved it. You know yep. what I'm saying? It's like, Tommy, you'd say, oh, okay, me who? Oh, yep. true, I'm your little brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Greg Williams, share some stories there. <laughs> oh, God, wait a minute. Drew just said that I'm your little brother. You know what the most thing that I remember him saying to me when uh -huh. Tommy did some crazy stuff and I'd tell Tommy, that's crazy. Or, don't you know you can go to jail for that? A man, come on, man. What about your money? And he would say, wait a minute, man. No, don't, don't, don't cuss me out. This could be you. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell you mean this could be me? I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Anyway, go on. I'll get there. Go oh, on. God. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. You know, so, I mean, but you know, in, in Grand Rapids, we had, um, so much stuff going on and I, I share this and, and you guys will push on too. But but what was interesting and, and Melvin can, can attest to this too because we came out the church and was playing in the clubs, you know what I mean? And Tommy was with us, you know, Tommy went with us with all the stuff. The rest of them couldn't cause you know, L was studying to be a minister underneath Uncle right. Bill. Right. And and um, all the rest of them, you know, Bunny and all them, they were they were with the group. The DeBarges were a gospel singing group, you know, at that time. And uh, we had Marvin Sapp over at what was it, New Hope or something like that, MC? I'm trying to think of where he uh, yeah. was. Uh, and we all ended up at Bethel because we yes. all knew that that was where the music was, you know, the gospel music was being done on a big scale over there at the Abney's church. And let me yeah. ask you, Drew, I mean, of all those churches, and I think Marvin was out of True Light, and quite frankly- that, Okay, yes. that's what it was. Okay. Yes. okay, and over at Bethel, the music, the gospel music there- Yes. Sounded like contemporary. It compared to yes. Al Green and the OJs mm. and all that. And mm. that's yes. why a lot of people gravitated to that particular church, because yes. we could, you know, we could go have a jam session on Sunday. And yes. that's penalized for it. Excuse mm. me, I just had to- so, so, Marty, so Marty, at, at that age, at, at that young age, I mean, DeBarge, the the DeBarge was pretty much known around town. At that young yeah, age, they, yeah, they were known in the churches. In the church, um, thank you. Um, okay, you know, they were known okay. in the churches and stuff, and like out of Detroit, you know, because Maddie Moss Clark, you know, Greater Grace, and all those big churches over there, they all knew of the DeBarges through the Abney. Yeah, Abney's exactly. Mm -hmm. the Abney's because mm -hmm. see, see, uh, Adderline and uh, James and all. I mean, excellent musicians, I mean, singers, singers, mm. excellent mm. singers and stuff. So the DeBarges were known um, in the church circuit. The only ones that we got was Tommy and Bobby. 
Okay, and let me uh, let me expound for a second. Excuse me, but let me expound. See who was known. The Abneys were known worldwide for their yes. gospel prowess. And oh, I didn't know that. Ederlene, oh, yeah. absolutely all over. And then Ederlene being a sibling of uh, Pastor uh, William Abney and mm -hmm. Brother James Abney, who actually sang with the Four Tops at a point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, they uh, the Abneys, the barges benefited from that because yes. of the Abneys. Okay, right. but. Bobby and Tommy, even though they grew up in the church, they were not necessarily, they were in it, but not of it mm -hmm. in the sense of wanting to explore their musical talents mm -hmm. and musical outlets. So that's what prompted them to hang out with all of us, me and us heathens, me and Drew and and and, and <laughs> MC them, hang out with us heathens and go to the bars and do whatever we we can do to make the real music according to us. Tell it, tell it, Greg. Tell it. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. So, Greg, when did when did when <laughs> Greg, when did you and Tommy connect? At, at what point did you and Tommy connect? Was this all around the same time? Was it the same? With, well, uh, I don't know it being the same as well? time because I don't know, but it was a, when Tommy was in his teens and he and I connected after I met Bunny, who first, I met Bunny first at Ottawa Hills High School. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I met her brother, Bobby, who didn't go to school, but hung out at the school. Yes, in the piano room. Just like, just like yeah. I did, because I wasn't going to class either. Mm -hmm. So we was hanging out and we was hanging out with the music program. And so you Bobby, said the piano room? In the, in the piano, piano room. room. Well, actually, there was a choir called Sounds of Soul, and I think Drew might have more information about that because yep. he was more in it than not, and, and, and less of it, and I was of it and less in it. So anyway, <laughs> with that being said, uh, I met, uh, hung out with Bobby. Me and Bobby talked about different kind of music. We weren't talking about no gospel music because I didn't know it was a foreign. You might as well spoke in French to me. But mm -hmm. anyway, bottom line is through meeting Bobby and going to the house and hanging out, that's when I met Tommy. And strangely enough, Tommy just latched on to me. Like, I'm, I talked about that roach blood. Well, this leech blood. He mm -hmm. just hung on. <laughs> and I couldn't let the brother go. And it was like, I wrote about it in this little thing here that I posted on Facebook, the fact that Tommy told me he wanted to hang out with me. And we asked his mother, mother could he hang out with me? And he been hanging, hang, hung with me until he died. To be honest with you, do mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of situations. That was my little brother. I loved him mm -hmm. dearly, respected him to the utmost. You know, me mm -hmm. and him both crazy, so it was kind of okay, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. that's when we met, and until he passed the other day is, is you know, the only thing that stops it, that mm -hmm. cuts it short, and it still mm -hmm. don't, because mm -hmm. I'm gonna love him forever, and he always gonna be a part of me and my memories and my dialogue. It's just yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. MC. Yes, sir. <laughs> you and Tommy, how did you guys meet? Oh, wow. Listen, you know, that it's, it's funny to piggyback off of what Drew says. And I'm sorry, before we go any farther, for those that don't know, MC uh, plays guitar. Great guitar player. Awesome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and, and, you know, I, I was laughing when Drew was talking about Tommy running down the street with no shirt on <laughs> with the bass. Yeah. <laughs> because I had a similar situation. I had, you know, Andre Abney, of course. Yeah. And I were friends. So that's how I met the DeBarges. And so I had met Tommy a few years earlier and I didn't really know him. Okay. But what happened was we moved up on Thomas and Fuller area. Okay. And so I'm walking down the street one day and this guy comes just like Drew said, barreling down the street, man. He was just flying. And I was like, man, what's wrong with this guy here? He said, hey, dude. He said, I know you. He said, man, you my cousin Andre's friend. I said, really? Uh, and so anyhow, um, I was like, I'm trying to remember, where do I know this guy from? This is like about 68, I think, Drew 69. I think he was going into seventh grade, or eighth grade or something. But anyhow, I was like, man, Oh, yeah, this is one of those, because listen, like he said, the word Hispanic. Now, I would have you chose another word because when I first met him or seen him, this guy's face was, and his hair was just all over, and he had dirt on his face, and he was like, like he'd been eating and playing in the dirt at the same time. I said, like, man, I don't know. He said, yeah, my cousin Andre, man, my cousin Andre. Now, ironically, I was walking down the street with a guitar. And 
this guy says, man, you play the guitar, I do too. Uh, uh. Oh, really? You know, I'm like, just moved in the neighborhood. I'm like, I got a friend. He said, but no, I don't play the guitar. You play, I play the bass. Uh -huh. I said, oh, I got somebody who lives down the street at the end of the block. I said, now we can hang out together. And you know what's funny about it is from that day forward, almost daily, Tommy would come down the street and sit on my porch. I'd sit on the porch, you know, playing the guitar. Drew, and I know you remember, Greg, you probably remember two people were like, man, don't go over there in that area, man. Two or three blocks away, you can hear that guy on that guitar. He's on the porch, got a great big custom amp. He's got that great big custom amp sitting on the porch. My mom was at work, so I was kind of like free to roam yeah, until like about yeah. four or five o'clock. But you know what, what sticks out is Tommy, from the day that I met him, he has such a warm, sweet personality. I mean, he was just a lovable guy. And mm -hmm. I fell in love with him from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The thing about it was when I first heard this guy play, he knocked me off my feet. And he was mm -hmm. just learning. And he was mm -hmm. better than most guys around that had been playing for a couple of years already. He wow. just had this natural hearing feeling that just, man, like, and like you said, like Drew said about us playing in church, we did play in church. Mm -hmm. We played in church and we played in the bands. But Tommy had a feel like when we would go to Bethel, mm -hmm. man, the grooves were just there because we mm -hmm. had Bobby was playing keyboards and um, Tommy, of course, was playing bass. Andre was the drummer at the time, Andre Abney. I never will mm -hmm. forget. But it mm -hmm. was like another session because we used to do a lot of jam sessions. But it was like going to a session on Saturday at the Glow. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know about that, Greg. You know about that, Drew. Thank but you. <laughs> you know, Tommy was Tommy was just a lovable, warm guy that that from day one when I met him, I fell in love with him. I'm in love with him right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, that was my brother. That was my little brother. A uh, couple of years younger than Drew and I, maybe I ain't gonna say how many years younger than Greg, but you know, uh, no. just great oh. memories of Tommy. <laughs> well, see, Greg, now you know I remember when I met you too, but we're not gonna talk about that. Well, no, this is about Tommy, okay? Yes, if sir. I, if right, I can right. This is about Tommy. In here, if I can stick a little tag in here, and I'll speak to Teresa, who's over the silent. Teresa, every one of the guys in here has a story about how Tommy made us love him because he. Mm. He was not gonna let us not love him. That's mm. right. That's Tommy. Tommy, yeah. and that that applied to us and everybody else. We were a little more pronounced <clears throat> because we were close to him. But Tommy had a way of drawing in people and making people. You gonna love me? This could be you. Yeah. So you gonna Very well put. Love me. <laughs> Very well put. Well, well, I, I have to tell that, you like, guys, like, I'm loving this. This is amazing. <laughs> and I just told my childhood friend who I met when I was three. And I used to have switches, posters on the wall when I was in high school. I just told her what I'm doing right now. And she was like, how do I get in? What do I have to do? I'm like, ah, 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 ah. You have somebody else coming in too, by the way. But yes, I'm loving this, there guys. Is. This is amazing. This is legendary. Awesome, awesome. It's and that's funny. Like like you said, Tommy would, would draw in people. Like your your story as far as like him and the, and the policeman, you know, do you know, don't you know who I am? <laughs> right. Right. The audacity of Tommy, but yeah. you the audacity of you and not knowing who I am. Right, <laughs> right, right. And I mean, he would just go up to people that are like, well, now you remember, uh, uh, we were, I think we were out shopping, we were all out shopping uh, for clothes or something uh, like that. Uh, and Rod Stewart, I know where you're Rod, going, Stewart Rod Stewart, Rod right. Stewart, across the street. Right. Y'all remember that? Rod Stewart is across the street and, and Tommy, <sighs> just like they're friends for years. Hey, Rod, how you doing? You know, like just Tommy. And I think Philip was the first one. Tommy, you don't even know. <laughs> right? Right? Yep. Yeah. That was his personality, though. Totally. Y'all can't forget yep. his friend John Tavares, either. <laughs> <laughs> and John for those Tavares. that don't know, that was John Travolta. But right, according right, to Tommy, right. that was John Tavares. John Tavares. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Jody, as, as a drummer, playing with a bass player, Tommy, what was that like? And of course, you guys, please, take, take the floor. <laughs> no, um, I, I just just listened to some of these beautiful expressions of Tommy and uh, you know people people's relationship the one on ones is different for different people. That's right. So my 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 personal relationship. Uh, I'm, someone just mentioned about his personality, the sweetness of his personality, and that that's what I really appreciated about Tommy. And um, I, I 
Now, this might, this is real to me. Please. But please. Tommy, to me, was one of the humble DeBarges. Now, I know you guys have a different relationship with DeBarges, but I was more on the outside. And I just knew them and their personality, you knew Bobby and you knew the others. But Tommy just seemed like uh, he didn't really realize how talented he was to me. Mm -hmm. he, he was very, very talented. Mm -hmm. And I love the texture in his voice when he sang that song, Found oh. Someone, mm -hmm. uh, that song he wrote and he sang. And mm -hmm. a beautiful, the, the texture of his voice. I just don't think that he's ever really uh, got to uh, express his talent like he really had. Because mm -hmm. of all the other things going on in his life, obviously, but uh, it, it was funny too. Because I remember Agreed. we were in the uh, what was that in Detroit when we had that uh, that first autograph session, and we drove up and we went behind uh, the mall, if you remember. And uh, so the security guy comes and gets in the van, uh, the the limo, and he says, "Look, now you guys got to go out here one on one, one at a time, because of all the crazy people there." And so you open the door up and the first thing Tommy goes out and he was just walking all slow and all swagging because he was like digging all the girls and everything. And they almost choked him. If you remember one. Right. Car, this way, <laughs> car, that way. And so yep. the security guy threw him back in the, in the limo and said, look, man, my job is on the line. Man. You got to get in there. Right. <laughs> well, we straightened up real quick. Then, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yep. that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, it was just sad to hear about uh, Tommy. It was mm, very it, sad because uh, really he was really gifted. He was talented. He was engaging when you talk to him. He was funny. Mm -hmm. And um, it, and like I said, he was um, he was willing to be a follower, too. He mm -hmm. wasn't someone that, uh, you know, like I'm the man amongst the group. Now, how he did other ways, I don't know. But uh, from my experience, uh, he, he was willing to be a follower. He, he mm -hmm. never, ever, I've never, ever heard one negative statement about the group from Tommy. Never. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anything when we were all the things was going on. Never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tommy was just awesome. I loved him. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's interesting to, to your point, as far as like, um, uh, he's, he's well known for his bass playing, but to your point, as far as his vocals, Tommy had such a rich, rich, rich vocal voice. Hey. Um, you know, he was always in tune. I mean, he, he could sit, he was just as talented a vocalist as he was a, as a bassist. Um, right. Little known fact that, you know, most people don't know, and I always share this, um, when you listen to our song, I Want to Be Closer, on those backgrounds, that's Tommy singing the top part. It's assumed that it's Bobby, but it's actually Tommy singing that top part. I don't know if you, you, I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, yeah, but it's assumed that that's Bobby singing that. Da, 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 da. That's Tommy singing that, you know, which, no. which you know. <laughs> Eddie, I asked him once, um, I said, hey, man, because we were, you know, talking about doing new music, and I kept saying, man, you have the most beautiful voice. And, mm -hmm. and I really hope you take the lead on some of these songs. And he always told me, he said, but you know, when I'm playing in concert, I have a hard time singing lead and playing bass at the same uh, time. Uh -huh. And yeah. I didn't know for a bass player that, that that's a thing, but he said, no. That is a thing, yeah. He said, yeah. when you're playing bass, he said, I just can't sing lead at the same time. But every time I stop playing bass, I'll jump in. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. His voice was phenomenal. Phenomenal voice. Yeah. You're right. Phenomenal voice. Totally agree. Yes, I yeah. agree. And he's so known for his bass playing that 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 part is kind of like moved to the side. But you're right. I mean, he was a fun, phenomenal vocalist. Great vocalist. You know, that's him obviously on the lead on uh, "Best Beat in Town." You know, mm -hmm. have a beat. That's that's Tommy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, yep. so when we do that now, Eddie, that's you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I could I couldn't touch Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't touch him. I can't touch anybody for that matter, but it's but you know, I can oh, come, on. In that one. come on. <laughs> you know, so. Unfortunately, the beauty yeah. of it all yeah. is each one of us, everybody on this page right now, holding their own mm -hmm. when it comes to singing, playing, and doing what they gotta do. Yeah, we might be different from somebody else, mm -hmm. but we give it the best we got, each one of us. And it makes me so proud to know each of you and to have ventured through life with you guys. Cause uh, yep. Hey, hey, do, you, do you guys have any stories about him as a performer? Because I do, but I know you guys perform <laughs> longer. Wow. Uh, like on stage, you know, I remember, you know, being, you know, I've only, I'm the, uh, I've only been around y'all for 20 years. 20 years. Um, <laughs> only 20. Y'all been with each other for like, you know, much, much longer. But I remember years. <laughs> Tommy, you know, that spirit of love you guys are describing, it came across on stage because. Do you remember the tongue? <laughs> he yeah. was always out there. 
hung out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hung yeah. Out. Yep, that was his thing. <laughs> his hung his out, thing. And, and he would be right there. And in all the hits, can't you remember how he would always, he would do the, uh, yep, yep, uh, yep. with his hiss. And mm-hmm. He was <laughs> just so out there as a performer. And it was his personality for the world to see when he was mm-hmm. on stage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And That's it's right. just special, very special. No, so, um, sure. when they uh, talked about the sounds of soul, um, hmm. which was uh, a group that came, it was a gospel group that was in our high school that was like the sounds of blackness, mm-hmm. right? And that situation had all of the barges playing. You know, Bobby was playing piano. I think uh, L was playing organ. Um, uh, let's see, who was who, who else was in? I was on drums, but Tommy was playing bass. And... Um, Marty was playing trumpet, Marty. okay? But it's like the, the group sounded like, you know, like the sound of black is really contemporary um, gospel that was in high school, you know? But Tommy playing with him and that thing, Tommy always had a drive mm-hmm. his bass. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking from a drummer standpoint of view, working with a bass player, his drive was second to none. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I would, like I said, his his style, his style, it was it was he was m- melodic. I mean, you know, yes, he, you know, yes, he was totally melodic in, in his style and his approach to playing. It was, it was that way, and you hear it a lot. Um, in in they'll never be, you know, do 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 do. I mean, everything right. was like, I mean, very very melodic. I, I call your name another one. Very melodic playing, you know. So <laughs> in, incredible basses, and like I said at the top when I first met him i'm like man this guy lewis johnson you know larry who wait until you wait till you meet this guy <laughs> you know you know and to Achilles point i mean it was a joy watching him in the studio i mean he come up with these great ideas and all that stuff and that tongue and of course on stage please yeah, yeah. <laughs> that tongue was just out there like all the time you know so, so did motown they they allowed him to play on certain ones right certain tracks right he was what do you mean for switch? No, he played on everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He played. Yeah, it was I mean, down to whoever produced, and and ninety percent of it was Tommy on with right. everybody. Yeah. I want to be closer. Uh, Jermaine put the band together, um, but he's playing. Yeah, that that track was already done when we got the there. track was done. You're right, Eddie. Yeah. Right, the yeah. track was done. But I'm saying the other stuff. That's Tommy. But I have to say, Eddie, yeah. when you and I first met, because Eddie and I was in a local band, you know, called Raw Soul, mm-hmm. and then uh. You know, we knew about White Heat, you know, Greg and Jody and um, Bobby. Because mm-hmm. Tom, well, Tommy wasn't in, I'm talking about the album. The original group too. I got right. You. We, we oh, just, we were like, you know, some other folks from like Michigan and Ohio. Because, you know, we had basically Ohio players, you know, it's like, oh, wow. Right. Somebody right. from Ohio like did something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you guys got that record deal. We had the album. And then I was like, why did they end back up in Akron, Ohio? You know what I mean? Because. <laughs> But I, hey, I'm glad you did. Trust me. But right, right, same. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but that's when we started hanging out. We started doing shows and stuff together. And I remember meeting Tommy. I remember I was 16. I think Eddie, you were like 18, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Tommy was 17. I I still remember him playing me. We over to the band house. Uh, Where's the party? And I was like, oh. I was like, mm-hmm. man, are you kidding me? I mean, 17, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, that's legendary. that's the song that he wrote, right? <laughs> yeah, he wrote that <laughs> and sang it. But I mean, he was just playing it for me. Before it was mm-hmm. recorded, I said, mm-hmm. man, this is like stupid good, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so the musicianship, we all had that respect. Yeah. And that's why when this all came together, it was just like, you know, um, it was people, people, even to this day, you know, the one things we get when we do shows, first of all, they always talk about our harmony, but mm-hmm. they forget that we're all musicians as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and so there's a, there's a, a picture. I think you put it on the uh, little movie, uh, Akili, where Jody you're on the drums and Bobby is right next to you, like getting ready to- Right to get on the, right. Yeah, right, ready right. to get on the drums. You're going to come out and, front. I mean, it right. was just- And Jody grabs the mic and goes down in the front and starts singing lead. <laughs> yeah, oh, so I mean, it was just, you right. know, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. but no, when, when I first saw Tommy, it's, and Greg, honestly, to your credit, you know, putting these folks together, even MC at the time, it was just, and then me and MC and Tommy got stories at the band house when you and Jody came to California. I remember at one time MC and them was like, I'm like, what y'all doing? I'm, I'm asleep. And they, they come in the room, <laughs> yeah. like, like, you know, come in the room and, and I was sleeping. They, they pull in the covers. I'm like, what the hell? 
and you, I didn't see nobody. And he's like, and they were, I'm like, and then when I'm like, what y'all doing, man? I'm trying to sleep. That was him. That was MC and Tommy when y'all went to California. So that's why I was like, that's why, that's why I was like, you know what, man? I mean, Mansfield is only 60 something miles from America. I'm going back home. I'm going home. I'm going back home and eat my mama's cooking, still up to be with all this. And that's when Tommy said, hey, man, can I, can yeah, I go with you? Can I go with you? And I was like, well, let me ask my mom. Mm -hmm. MC didn't ask me. I was gonna let him because I ain't gonna let him pull no covers on. No. <laughs> yes, buddy, we had fun there. No, we did That's have a lot true. of fun. Uh -huh. Yes, me, but it was, yeah, it was it was me and MC and Tommy left at the at the house in Mansfield, right? right. You know, when you and uh, Jody came out, and um, mm -hmm. but yeah. So what I'm saying though, the musicianship, and think about it. Even when we did that little demo, eight songs in what about two weeks, two and a half weeks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that was pretty amazing to do all of that, and uh. You know, I wish, do you, I, matter of fact, I never asked this. Does anybody have a copy of those eight songs? Greg, don't Jody, you, you got a copy of those songs? I do not. We mm -hmm. only had one tape, if you remember, Greg. I know. Oh, of course. Right, right, <laughs> right. And co coincidentally, um, that was also in the dead of winter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. We even slept in the studio in Columbus, Ohio. I remember freezing. that one night. Yep. <laughs> yep. And yep. Tom was nice enough to allow us to stay there, you mm -hmm. know, but yeah, not Tom mm -hmm. E, but Tom, I think Tom. Tom Murphy, the engineer. Tom Murphy, yes. Yeah, he's going to own the studio. But anyway, no, okay. Let me even back then, it's just the respect for the musicianship, even what, 16, 17 years old was. At, at such a young age, yep. And yeah. we all took it seriously at that age. We all, we this did. is like a serious thing, you know. This was not, we weren't playing at it, we were playing, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Greg, you, Greg, you were going to say something there? I was just going to interject that I got it. <laughs> you do have it? I got it. Whoever wants it, you can have it. I, I definitely oh, want it. Same. Oh, you same. I got it. I because in the shared switch folder, Greg. And Greg. Let I'm, me in there. And Jody. If not, I'll put it in there. Now, I'm going to tell you, because if you think about it, we did Somebody's Watching You, remember, mm -hmm. as part of the demo, yeah. which was, I think, the only song from that demo that actually made the album. That's right. right. You're right. Yeah, right, and, right. And Jody right. did that. And if you remember, Jody, when we first did Soul Train behind... Um, and I wish I, I wish we could get a copy of that. We did Behind Jermaine. We didn't even have a record out, but right. they allowed us to do two songs. And we're like, man, we ain't got a record out, but it was cool. <laughs> we played behind um, we played behind Jermaine, but then we got to do Somebody's Watching You. And was it I Want to Be With You? I want to be with you. Yep. Yep. On the very first time we did Soul Train. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I remember when we did Somebody's Watching You, they were all dancing and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. But y'all yeah. do know that that's on 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 YouTube, right? Both yeah, songs. yeah, it's available. I, okay, I need to find it because I I haven't been able to find that one. Send me it's the cool. link. Both those songs are on there. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm I've seen the "They'll Never Be" any other stuff, but I'm talking about the very first time no, we that did performance. Main. That performance is is there. Okay, there. cool. Yeah. But yeah, Jody had that like marching band thing. <laughs> the drum line. Right? The drum line. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it was such unique, um, again, so many people focus on our vocals, but honestly, it was everything, it was the whole package. We were a good band, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Philip, you remember that long drive across the country on the bus with Tommy? Oh, heck yeah. With and you, matter of fact, I talked about well, that. We made that. We made that bus drive an adventure, and of course, Tommy led the path. Of course. <laughs> I talked about that up on Facebook, because if you remember, my mom actually made us some food. Remember, I had all yeah. that food. Yeah. Oh, so we went to the back of the bus and we were like, oh man, y'all want some chicken? <laughs> 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 I mean, my, yeah, my, my mom, Greg. very oh. hospitable. Hey, Greg. Yo. Hey, man, do you have a copy of the Pell Mell Groove? Ooh. Hey, you we of that, Drew. Uh, not you, are you, you're not talking about the very original. But, yeah, what we did with Tommy playing bass and then uh, your. Was a cousin or uncle? Uncle, my uncle. Uncle, uncle. Uh, played bass too. But remember, MC was playing the Doctor Q. Yes, <laughs> yes. I got it, Drew. I got yes. it. I swear, oh, yeah. I got it. Yeah, I yeah. got it. It's on the cassette, right? It's on the cassette, right, Greg? Yes, it is, Eddie. Right. You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. I got it. Mm -hmm. I got yeah, it. We did that in my in my spot over there, in my house, where we recorded that over there. I had two oh, track recording. Drew, was, Drew at his studio. I, from I right know. Drew, come on, Drew. That's what I was talking about from the very beginning of this conversation. Drew was original. Right. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
Hey, any of you guys want that, somebody email me. I'll create a Dropbox. I'll put it in there and you got it. Please. Absolutely. Something else you yep, guys may here. or may not recall or know. The first Switch Live, Jody, that we did in 1981 when we were out with the Barcades, I've mm -hmm. got live, I've got that live too. Mistakes and all, I got the whole damn show. The show actually only got one show and that was from Phoenix, Arizona when we did the... Uh, I had the name of it, but I just lost it. But it was a theater in the round. Yeah, ah, yeah I remember right. that. Right. hosted it, uh, 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 Jody. Uh, he emceed that day. Chips, I got yeah. that whole show on on uh, my cassette on my computer. So any of you guys want any of that stuff? Please, you let me know I definitely want that. Definitely, I'll share it with you. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, just don't release guys? it because I've been trying not to re release it because it's a little rough. But between yeah, y'all right. got it. Yep, I heard mm -hmm. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Akila, you were talking about what when uh, the time that you worked with Tommy. I saw a couple of photos where you guys were actually like in the studio. Did it, is uh, that right? Uh huh. What was that like for you? Oh man, Tommy. Was just, <laughs> Tommy. So Tommy was brilliant, as as everyone here has said, but he was also a jokester. Tommy yeah. loved to crack jokes, and there's a lot of things. I can't even share it publicly because it's not. Thank you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole bunch. That's of Tommy too. That's Tommy too. Yeah, it's it's not all PG. But, oh, we have some good memories, man, of him doing things and saying things and being a jokester and being so full of life that even though, you know, we have business to do, it couldn't have been more fun. You know, working with Tommy and recording with him, it could not have been more fun. And his spirit was infectious. I don't know anybody who was ever around him that were happy if he was around. It's just, mm -hmm. he was just in infectious. Um, the only people that weren't happy when he was around were Greg, the people on that tour bus who kicked us off. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in New York. And again, uh, wait a minute, real quick, I thought that was really cute and clever of you to allude to what Tommy did, but not tell it. I'm not going to tell it. Well, but but wait a minute, we're among family, and I'm going to tell I, it. Gonna say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a show that I missed, because I heard it about was, this. Philip, I, was, missed, I heard it. about that. I'll yeah. let you tell it. I'm not going to spill the beans. I'm well, talking about it. <laughs> I don't remember the uh who Raul from uh SOS band and Bobby from uh Daz band. So it was a crew thing, and we were out for a few dates that we were doing with the Daz band. Mm -hmm. Tommy went in the bathroom, but he didn't tell anybody though, Greg. He just and disappeared. No, he didn't. He just went in there, and all of a sudden we got aroma from and, 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 and wait, you said one more thing, Greg. I hate to interrupt, but remember, oh. we're on a tour bus. We're going <laughs> city, we're going from city to city. And we're coming out of Canada on our way to a show in New York. We're on a tour bus and we're all on the tour bus. And Greg, go ahead, your story. <laughs> no, no, you just don't. Oh, he's gonna, right. Tommy he's, gonna, he's gonna pass it now. <laughs> you said, well, yeah, he's gonna pass the hard part, but it ain't the hard part. Cause Tommy went in the bathroom and lit the whole damn bus up. Bus driver had to pull over and we all. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, so what happened? What happened? <laughs> okay, let me put it. There was an okay, older. You know, Oh, it was a serious odor. Thank you. <laughs> serious. Tommy had, for lack of the, uh, well, Tommy had a bowel movement and it turned the whole bus off. <laughs> but he, I only heard of it, like I said, I only heard about it because I, I, I wasn't at that show. So but. the tour bus had been ruined, <laughs> to say the least. It's all of us on tour, all these groups. The tour bus is, is functionally useless at that and point. And we had to evacuate the damn bus on the freeway. <laughs> Nobody knew we did it. Nobody, and nobody was owning up to it. But the bus was ruined. And when we finally figured out that Tommy was the culprit. Well, everybody he, finally realized that it was Tommy the Barge. They wanted to throw switch off the bus. They looked like we were refugees. Guilty by from, association. That's exactly. Oh, what man, it was bad news. It was really bad news. Wow. And exactly Tommy, what they again, did. come on, Greg, don't do that, man. This could be you. <laughs> wow wow but i'm, yeah, I'm philip i'm with you i missed that one. Oh yeah but it, this was a this was a story that you will all remember and jody you remember this too this was i always call this pre-american idol we were all up at motown and i 
we had a meeting and when we came downstairs in the lobby, we were all together, all six of us. And remember this girl said, oh, switch. And oh, she got all excited. You remember this, Jody? And she was like, switch. And she was like, had us all together. And she wanted to take a picture and stuff. It's like, okay, you know, we're like all nice. And we can relieve. And then she says, you know, I can sing. And none of us asked her to sing. We were like, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and so we're still getting ready to leave. And then if you might remember, she was like, if I was your woman and you were my, <laughs> and just what you just did, Tommy was the first one. Of course. He lost it. I mean, he, he lost it. He was, he was worse than Simon Cowell. He lost it. <laughs> and she got so upset. She started crying. You remember this? And she said, well, well y'all don't look like your pictures. But then, man, then how did you know who we were and then the whole band lost it <laughs> I mean, it's like, it was like wait a minute first you say switch you want to take some pictures and then you it's like anyway yeah it was yeah but that was me right he yeah, was she, but i mean honestly she she said she could sing but honey if i was joe i still remember the song I was well, you gotta did one little thing you gotta did the one little one little thing wrong the girl broke out singing and I mean, she's a little girl, and she, if I was you, kind of had a very white thing about it. <laughs> but he had that sense of humor, he would crack up laughing. Oh, he, he, he and, lost and, it on that and, one. And, oh, yeah. and cracking up laughing, he had that infectious laugh. I mean, it filled the whole room. You, know, right. he would you couldn't laugh. help but follow him. You couldn't, and, and, and you the couldn't thing help is, it. Tommy was just unfiltered. It just yep. did not matter. He yep. was unfiltered. It didn't exactly. <laughs> Went in, it came out. He didn't, you know, it wasn't that he didn't care. He couldn't help it. <laughs> he was <So>. Tommy. <laughs> <sighs> wow. <laughs> One of the best things in my life are with that guy. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to say also, too, um, even on the serious note, that I got a chance to FaceTime with Tommy last few days before he passed. Um, my sister had, had went to the uh, hospital, see him and stuff. And um, she FaceTimed us, you know, and um, he was, he was weak. His body was really weak. And he, he was still, you know, I love you, man. You know, and he always had a way of doing that with people, you know, like uh, Kelly was saying, his, his love just always would come out, you know, you know, Tommy meant well. You know what I mean? In his he heart. Did. He meant well. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He would always say, I can't help it, man. But you know, he had <laughs> you know, talking about Greg. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was like, but but we loved him. We mm -hmm. loved all of them. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, they not just because they became my in-laws, okay, mm -hmm. but but I had a love for them before that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's who they were. You couldn't help it because. And, and, and let me interject here for a second, because the DeBarges were all about love. They knew very little more than that. Mm -hmm. They knew love. They loved each other. They embraced each other. And that spilled out into you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. innocent to a whole degree their whole lives because a lot of teachings and lessons that a lot of us got, they did not get. Mm -hmm. But what right. they did get, they applied to each other and it expounded further out. Now, I'll take a second here, you guys, and share something that a lot of folks don't know, and that Please. is how Tommy passed. Tommy, actually, I don't know the specific title of his death, but we all know that Tommy was sick for quite a few years. He was on mm -hmm. dialysis more years than I've ever heard anybody being on dialysis. And still managed to play. <laughs> and still managed to reinvent Tommy every time he yes. got a chance. Yes. yes. You know, that's yes. what I was, I revert back I'm sorry, to. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah. No, 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 it's appreciated, Eddie. Mm -hmm. And, and I, that's, I revert back to that me saying Tommy had roach blood because Tommy's been sick for years and that mm -hmm. guy refused to die. He refused to stop. He mm -hmm. did things that were contrary to what any of us would have done you know, because I think our survival instincts would have kicked in a little better and told us, don't do that. But mm -hmm. Tommy was not prepared for that mm -hmm. because of the things that he did not learn or was not presented to him as he grew up. Again, the most important, significant thing that he and his siblings learned was love. And that's mm -hmm. what, that, what they were all about. Now, getting back to Tommy's 
last few days. Uh, the dialysis was was an issue. A lot of folks don't know that the uh, last couple of weeks, maybe the last six weeks, Tommy had gone into the hospital with COVID. Tommy was actually on a respirator. And a lot of those that loved him and knew him, you know, was wondering when that was going to end his life. Roach blood kicked in and Tommy came through. Okay. But in these final days, Tommy had liver failure. He had uh, his glucose level could not stabilize for anything, meaning it was so low. It kept dropping. He was in the 40, 30 range of glucose. Wow. And to the point where he was in and out of comas. Tommy was delirious a lot of the time. I know this because I was on the phone or text with his daughter every day for two weeks prior to his passing. Okay. So with all that, Tommy did not know who they were half the time. That's his baby girl. He didn't know who they were half the time. You know, uh, so again, liver failure, glucose dropping in and out to comatose levels. And then uh, because he had COVID, they had to stop the dialysis. So he went without dialysis for a few weeks. And then finally, when they were able to, he, he got infected. So his uh, uh, catheter got infected. So they had to take it out and they couldn't give him dialysis. Finally, they got him back to the point where they could at least put that back in. And the first time they tried to give him dialysis, his heart gave out on him. Oh. Just so you guys know what, what, mm -hmm. what actually transpired him. Mm -hmm. But keep this in mind, through all that, Tommy fought. In his awareness, he was fighting. In his unawareness, he was fighting. He tried to communicate like Drew communicated with him. I talked to his daughter. I got pictures of Tommy day before he left the planet. And Tommy was Tommy, man. You know, I mean, it was so simple. He fought. He fought. He had that, you know, I'm not making a joke about the roach blood at this point, but Tommy had a will to live, yep. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. matched by very few people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he had a will to love matched by very few people. And the whole thing of it is, is that he loved each and every one of us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We made his world make a difference, but when we stop and look at it, he <laughs> had a major impact on ours too. Did he not? Mm. Absolutely. Major. That's and speaking of that fight, I mean, Tommy's pretty much been a fighter all of all of his life, you know. I mean, <laughs> he's 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 been a fighter all of his life. All his life, mm -hmm. all his life. And great. Obstacles. Yo. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mentioned about the impact, it was about three years or so ago when Tommy was in the hospital. And, you know, and I, I went to see him, and, and you know, <laughs> Tommy was honoring with the nurses and stuff. I'm like, hey, come on, man, they're trying to take care of you. You know, like getting all grumpy. I'm like, anyway. But it, what I thought was interesting. He, he said, man, Philip, you know what? And you know, it's like, how do you answer this? He said, I really wish I'd have never left the group. And I just said, well, you know what? I said, Tommy, sometimes we make decisions in our life and we think they're the best at the time. I mean, cause I was like- At that, at that time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you think they're the best at the time. And so, but I say, hey, you know, we understand, you know, you had to do what you had to do, but he did have regrets. So, I mean, he, he shared did. that with me. So yeah, I just thought did. that was interesting. So like what you said about having the impact on his life, I mean, you know, from, like I said, I'm 16 and when we all met and so, you know, a lot of years together. So, mm -hmm. and did a lot of great music together. So, you know what I mean? Which is, yeah. and you know, it still lives on. Yeah. Yes. And you know what, above and beyond our legacy for hit records and you know, uh, uh, being significant, making a significant impact. What a lot of people do not know is that we were brothers all the way down. We had a genuine love and respect for each other, you know, and. And still are. Thank yeah. you. I noticed still that. Still will, yeah. Cause you know, Greg and MC, you know, you know, we, we go way back, but when we met, our, our Akron brothers, and even, you know, uh, Steubenville, is it, did I say it right? Steubenville, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say it. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> Steubenville, New York, New York. We're, we're all, <laughs> spirit, 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 no spirit. You know what I'm saying? Mm, right. See, we talked about this yesterday. And it's like, we always felt like that. Just like when we, was, we were talking about Dion, um, just meeting mm. him. Mm -hmm. His spirit, 
his smile. I said, man, I, man, that dude's smile when you it was just you know infectious, just like Tommy. Look at that picture in back of mm -hmm. Eddie, there, there, and there look at that big old smile Tommy's got mm. on his face. Yep. See, yep. it's infectious, man. Yep. Yes. You know, and 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 all of our vibes have always been like that, man. Ever since we've known each other, and hey, it's gonna keep on. Tommy's spirit is still with us, so you know that's it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that picture because everybody in that picture, we can probably all hear Tommy laughing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. He had that kind of a laugh. Y'all, right. like, y'all, 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 what's happening, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was his famous line. Yeah. He even said that in that clip when we when we're here at the house doing a vocal rehearsal that That's right. Healy put together. Y'all, y'all, what's happening, man? Hey, wait a minute. Real first, quick. Jody, Eddie, Philip, do y'all remember where that came from? No, but I just know it. I, I, Tommy. I don't remember. Well, okay, you remember how Phil, how how Tommy used to used to emulate Arnie and all that stuff. Oh, oh okay. Right. No, but that's not where it came from. Right. Where it came from, he was emulating little David at the house. <laughs> oh no, I didn't remember that. No. Y'all don't remember that? Do you remember that, Jody? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't he was emulating. <laughs> okay, I would explain it, but I, I, this is. But not I remember little David used to the, say that. This I is not the form to explain that. what little David had done, but little David had done something. We call him on the mat. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said, yeah, what's happening, little David? He said, yeah, what's happening, and Tommy? <laughs> Tommy oh, ran with it. I didn't remember that at all. It's actually the first thing he said to me, the first moment, the first instant I met him, Greg, after he picked me up from the airport way back then, we went and picked up Tommy, and he jumped out the window and said, what's happening, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tommy Keith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know what? Any any final, I mean, I guess everybody shared a final thought here. Anybody want to in closing? <laughs> you know, I I'll, I'll say this. You know, I too recently spoke with Tommy and I had no idea that's what was going to go down. I thought I was going to do a FaceTime with with um with him and april and just you know maybe say a few words or whatever so i was talking to april and she says she says mc she says tommy is hearing every word you say and so i stopped because that changed my whole feeling so in the midst of that tommy says melvin and i jumped and he said, the next thing he said was, I love you, man. Yes. And I wow. jumped again and he says, I love you. And it just tore me apart. Now this was on the Sunday prior to him departing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the his spirit, his love, his ability to say those few words because I, I didn't know at the time whether or not he was able to speak or whatever, it just, filled my soul, my heart, and it made me smile. And at the same time, I was crying on the inside. I cry, I'm crying now, but the point of the matter is this, that guy's spirit and energy was so strong and so infectious, as you said, Drew, this brother here from day one, when I met him, I knew I would know him all of my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just blessed that I was able to share life with him as a musician, as a brother, as a loving brother. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna always remember him in that way because Tommy was just Thomas Keith DeBarge. And you know, some of the funny things that you all have talked about and said about him, and there's been many things that we haven't mentioned, but Tommy was just a loving, lovable brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just wanna say that, you know, in closing. Thank you. And of Thank course, you. a great musician and a great singer. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then with that, I mean, perfectly put, we'll close with that. Uh, first of all, let me thank you all from the bottom of my heart for doing this. I mean, you know, thank this you means a lot I mean, to me personally, yes. and I'm, I'm glad, you thank know, you. For, for time. Who is this? Is this uh, James Strong? Is that who that is? Is he connecting now? Yeah, James <laughs> James, hey, what's going maybe, on, brother? Maybe he should be singing "Where's the Party" because he's right. coming all late to the party. Right. Yeah. We're about ready to close. We were just, we were just closing. Yeah. 
<laughs> Honey. Oh, 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 it's here. I don't care what we do. As long as we do all, calling all girls, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, and, and for those that don't know, Teresa, Andrew, uh, Jody, Please. and Melvin, uh, James Strong is, which is current at bass player. He's actually mm -hmm. was in before Dion, and he came back since Dion, mm -hmm. and he's working with us now. But he's also mm -hmm. one of our brothers. Can you take the mask off one second? They can see the face, man. Come on, man. Okay, there, there you go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, matter of fact, I wrote, I wrote about there. that. Uh, Look, I wrote about that. Always. You can always find me cheesing on a corner near you. <laughs> now, I wrote about that on my Facebook page because um, basically after Tommy started having some health issues, remember Michael Norfleet was working with us at the time and he's the one who recommended James. Absolutely. And, and you know, again, another phenomenal bass player. Yep. We've been yep. blessed to be working with some great musicians. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then, you know, and then after that, what was it, James, you had a, you got, you, you got a, was it some at Indiana State U? What was that? Uh, I U, Indiana University. Indiana University, yeah. yeah. So that was about five, six years or so ago, and that's when Dion came in, and then of course, so, but yeah. yeah. So that's been the three bass players: Tommy, uh, Dion, and James. And James. Wow, yeah. that's crazy, man. Yeah. I'm actually actually walking around in, in Costco. New, it's a new Costco <laughs> in town, and you know. Don't give me, hey guys, I live in uh, Mayberry, a a a AFRD. AFRD. <laughs> AFRD, that's one. AFRD. Hey, <laughs> they back, hey look, it's back, hey, I'm telling you, it's back was up in there, bro. I'm trying to survive. Awesome. Well, James, James, since you did join us and we were about to close, do you have any any thoughts on, on Tommy, on Tommy DeBarge? Oh man, just that, you know, the, I was, I had always been a fan of his. I was a fan of his when, before I even knew he was him, you know what I mean? <laughs> Coming up, learn, learning the bass lines, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just, you know, oh, I'm just, I've always been a fan of the, of, of the legacy and the music and just, you know, I, it's euphoria for me, I, you know, in terms of I, just being, believing where I'm at to this, to this day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You look back mm -hmm. on your life and you, you reflect, and you're like, damn, how did I get here? Lord, <laughs> thank you for looking out for me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the beauty I mean, of it is, just like you and I were talking this morning, James, is, is you bring something valid to the table you always have. You know, and I do dare say that Tommy and Dion both would be proud of you picking up the torch and carry on the legacy of what we had to try to do for so, what we what we're trying to do at this point in life. Good word. Word. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, Greg, that's why uh, I ended my uh, I ended my Facebook page because I said, you know, we lost Tommy, we lost Dion, ten days apart. So I said, James, you're gonna have to live up to your last name and stay strong. I, I yeah. read that, Philip. I did read you're that. Right. I definitely read you're that. Right. And he you're hit right. me back yeah. and like, yeah. he Eddie. said, okay, <laughs> Eddie. Yes, sir. Eddie, thank you so much for this. Absolutely. You know what? And As again, well, I'm, I'm again, I'm going to throw this to Teresa because Teresa came up with this brilliant idea, and of course, I was like all on. I'm like, absolutely, we, we should we should do that. So, Teresa, thank you. I mean, absolutely, great, wonderful idea. And oh, um, it was a privilege to just be a fly on the wall you know, <laughs> and, and just watch this and, and witness. You know, I I have to thank you because I've been in production for 18 years. You guys that know me know that, and. You know, both my parents are gone and I have literally 30 seconds of my mother speaking on recording and nothing of my father. So when we lose somebody, I want to capture. It's always the first thing I think of is get the family together and at least capture the memories, you know, because. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So it's it's been a privilege. I want to thank you guys for just letting me sit here and go. Wow. Be a fly on the wall. Although I would have loved to have, like film that whole bus incident. With you guys getting evicted off the bus, that would have been classic. But that's another story. I thank you so well, much. All, all I can say is I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> it's it's funny. I've always said when when whenever I get with the guys, when when we all you know we can be out to dinner or whatever, we always like sit for like an hour and a half, two hours, and just talk. And there was one time we got together. I'm like, man, we should have like a tape recorder sitting at the table, you know, 
from the moment we sit down because we never know. I mean, there's so many stories of, of which we can share in here. We just, time just won't allow. But um, okay, let I mean, me interrupt that because please. you don't need a tape recorder in 2021. There right, right. Well, anyway. on your phone. Put my phone. Uh, put put my phone in the middle of the table. He came up, it wasn't 2021 when he came up with that. He came up with that October 30th, 2016 at a restaurant in Las Vegas Las after Vegas. we did a show, me, him, and Philip was having breakfast. Am I right, guys? <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So in the last that's five years, nobody's hit record? <laughs> uh, you say what, honey? In the last five years, none of you wonderful musicians and artists haven't hit record. I mean, oh, record oh, is your career, right? You guys oh, oh, you know you what it is. Leave, Honestly, it to, leave it to Boss Goss know, to come up you? with that. Okay. No, but you know what? It's it's a plethora of stories, and which just you, something will trigger this, and another thing comes up. You know, it's just and the conversation just start. They just yeah. start. You know, and two hours later, it's like, man, I wish we recorded that. You know, like because yeah, you're before, not thinking like about oh, let's this. let's be, you know, we're just talking. Just like before this, before we actually like started recording, where you said, you know, Teresa had asked, you know, should, you know, let me know when to record. I'm like, you start you now. You start now, yeah. You know, can't be good. This is just us when we all get together, <laughs> you know. So I mean, and Jody brought up bad records, you know, back in Detroit and stuff. I forgot about Tommy getting pushed back into the limo and the security <laughs> guard. I mean, I literally forgot. I remember the bad record story, but mm -hmm. I don't remember Tommy I getting about pushed that back. Part. Yeah, that's right. That's what but I mean. That's great, though, that he can talk about that because we can't even talk about how many limos Tommy got pushed out of. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about that. <laughs> And 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 add to that a tour bus. I mean, wow. And a tour wow. bus. Whoa, young rock stars. That's it. But you know what? What just going back to Jody's thing when uh, I don't know if you remember this when we went back to the hotel because remember Jermaine and Hazel, they were managing us at the time. And we went back to the hotel. Jermaine them never told us to not wear like scarves and watches and right? stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they told us after the after. fact, yeah. after you know, he almost lost his life. When, Right. Remember that, right. Jody? Right. Yeah, because it was like, right we didn't know. And, you know, <laughs> the Jackson 5 had all those hits. And so we learned doing mm -hmm. um, autograph sessions, we didn't wear, like, no rings, no watches, no scarves, mm -hmm. no nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, <laughs> as a matter of fact, wait a minute, it just made me think of one story. I remember one day we were doing, I want to be See, closer. Teresa? Wow. See? <laughs> no, no. But, no, check this out. And I've never done this since. Because, you know, we're doing, I want to be closer. Right? Uh -huh. And I remember this stage was high. And I'm I'm singing like this, and this girl grabbed my leg, and I said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute!" <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and I, I had to come step back. I'm like, I saw myself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, mm -hmm. after that, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna step like, you know, let me uh, mm -hmm. step back mm -hmm. here. You know, <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, and Philip, you, and Philip, you just said that we, we didn't know, we didn't know, and you remember Jermaine Jackson used to always say that you will never know how big you are. Oh yeah, you are. He you know, always say never that. know. Yeah, yep. he said that like almost, you know, I mean. All the From time. the start. What did he mean and by boy, that? Did we, though? Boy, what did, did we learn when we got when we because got because you when if you live in one city, you're reading, you know, mm -hmm. the impact you're having around the world, but you're not there. You uh -huh. mean like he said when the Jackson Five when they they started touring, you know, they were touring the United States, and then they're seeing just like, wow, and then they go to Europe, and so that's when you start seeing it. But you know, you're mm -hmm. reading, oh, you're happy, of course. Oh, we got a number one record. Okay, great. And let me. Let me, and, let you me, remember, me. and you remember, we were we were on the West Coast, so we saw how things were happening on the West Coast. When we went to Detroit, that's when we found out. It's like, oh, oh my yeah. goodness, you know. <laughs> so, Matter of fact, remember we were shaking. Remember they had to pull right. us out. The, yep. the owner got got up on it. He said, "We got to take switch out of here because y'all gonna tear up our store." <laughs> Blood right. coming. Not about us, the store. The screams were deafening. It was <laughs> yeah, they, they put us back in. Remember they put us back <laughs> in that little. What was it like a little cubby hole or something? Yeah, practically. <laughs> And then they, okay, they had me, to regroup everybody. It was like, ooh. Let me share some significance to that, who don't know, uh, really know, uh, Joey, don't. Eddie, and, and Philip, uh, to that extent. And that is this. Switch was a group of humble cats from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Akron, Ohio, and Steubenville, Ohio. We didn't bring egos to the table. We brought a desire to play music and become good at what we did. So we didn't trip on it. We didn't know how big we were because that ain't what we sought out in the first damn place. That's, that's it, exactly play. right. Exactly so therefore, right. with that in mind, uh, all these things that happen like bad yeah. records and, and, and other things like that, okay, it was oblivious until we found out, until Jermaine would say, y'all don't know how big y'all gonna be. We, mm -hmm. to the truth of the matter, I question now whether we know how big we be. <laughs> and we talking 40 years later.
Yep. Because that, that wasn't our motivation. We did it. Yeah. Out well, guys, love. can I put in my two cents as a super Please. fan? Okay, Please. I'm going to tell you how big you guys are. Okay. The first time I was going to work with Eddie, we met in a coffee shop with a lady named Nikki Logan. Yeah. And she Nikki? says, oh, Eddie's going to Eddie's gonna play. I said, Eddie who? She said, Eddie Fuller. I said, from Switch? She said, yeah. I said, does he know it's just a local thing? And she said, <laughs> yeah. And we sat at that table. And I have no problem talking. If you know me at all, I can talk all day. I sat there looking at Eddie like this. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, he said, yeah, I'm totally like, oblivious. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm just steady, you know. <laughs> and then, and then he, he agrees and he walks out. I'm like, he said, yes. Oh my God. He's going to be there. That is, do you know his, 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 their poster was on my wall? Wait till I tell the people back home. Oh my goodness. And I, it is such an honor to sit here. I can't Thank tell you. you. It is such an honor. One of the biggest songs back in the Midwest, Midwest that you guys remember. It's, this is what was interesting. You know, you had, you had the hitch. You had they'll never be. You know, I want to be closer. I call your name, right? Um, best feet in town, and then love over and over again. Those are like five biggest. But so many. I mean, like I mentioned, somebody's watching you. Mm -hmm. Radio stations would play that. You know, radio stations would play it. So we're radio. I mean, it was like yeah. Yeah. calling on our girls, like you said. Uh, That's what I said. That, so that, 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 but I'm saying all, different all DJs all around the country would play different songs, yeah. which yeah. said a lot, you, even though they weren't kid, the big hits. Yeah, as a kid coming up, calling all girls was a guy's anthem. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> at, at, when, when you know, you, you, if you get to a certain part in the party, like you know, you used to have house parties and basement parties and stuff, you get to a certain time in the party, <laughs> right? Like when the party's getting ready to end an hour before. The DJ switches from fast music to slow music. Calling all girls, come on, boy. It'd be about maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Everybody, by that time, you know, you know, you know, you know, you got your girl, you know, posted up and got whoever you gonna get for the night. But well, they're calling all girl, boy, come on. And he, that's when you seal the deal. When that tune come on, calling all girls. Oh man, I'm telling you, because I was a youngster. I was a young buck, you know, coming up back then, and and you know, so I'm watching my cousins come up. You know, they 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 done, they experiment with weed or experiment with chewing tobacco. And I'm just I'm just hanging out as a kid. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy <laughs> because I mean, the floor would be packed, and that song would be the anthem. And that's, that's why funny Greg too. always, I always mention it all the time. It's like, are we going to play right? it? Are we going to play it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's so funny too, James, because spirit. even at this point, it's not necessarily a part of the Switch uh, lineup. We try to get the hits and get out of town. But mm -hmm. we find over the years that a lot of people have attached to uh, uh, calling on our girls, that it has become a hit to a lot of people. You know, we play the radio stuff for the most part, but that is that. But mm -hmm. again, I say this too. Mm -hmm. According to what I've learned over the years, uh, guys, is that "They'll Never Be" was our biggest record in sales. "I Call Your mm. Name" was our biggest record in radio play, and then followed "I Want to Be Closer," which was never a single. And "Love Over and Over" winds up being fifth to. But you said "I Want to Be Closer" was never a single. It, it was. It was a B side, but it was never really released as an A side. "I Want to Be Closer." Yeah. I thought it was. Oh, that was great. That was a second yeah, single off our know. first album. It, it charted. Yeah. 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 It charted. Because they'll never be. And then the second release was I Want to Be Closer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me something about that because I'm I'm kind of lost there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Never be and I be uh, I, unless you get you it mixed that? up with I Want to Be With You. You said what? No. I, no, I Want to Be Closer. Yeah, that's. Why okay. you think? What, I knew it was a big record for us, but I never knew it to be a single. I don't recall yeah. that. Single. That was the second single. Why do you think every time we do it, we get a standing ovation? Especially when we do that, girl, I'll be. I mean, it's like every single time. That was a big record. And, 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 and what was please, the chart on please, that? Please, you, 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 you know, Jermaine Jackson song is not going to. You know, it's. I have. I don't remember it. where. It, you know, I don't remember where a lot of the stuff went. I can look in the scrapbook and tell you. Please do whatever you can on that because I'd like to. Because uh, I got to shut that up if I'm wrong. So anyway, but. Uh, point being, of all the things that we've done, uh, uh, our impact shows by right now, we're at the top of the charts again, guys, mm -hmm. with a song called No Friends in the Industry, but it's a sample of I Call Your Name. 
by wow. none other than Drake, by none other than Drake, who is one of the hardest, hottest recording artists of this damn century. Look, mm -hmm. if not the hottest. Mm -hmm. If not okay. the, right, okay. Yeah, he okay. would probably, he, he gotta be one and two up there with, you know, uh, with Beyonce, Jay-Z, or any of those cats. You know, you got a lot of young cats out there, but Drake, Drake is the godfather man right mm -hmm. now when it comes mm -hmm. to, mm, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, yeah, and that's man. still a confirmation and reiteration of the impact that we had and that's the true. quality and substance of what we brought to the table with our humble butts, right. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. right. mm. And I tell you, man, the unit is sounding real good. I can't wait to get back out there and get some good good rehearsal in. There we go. I'm glad we, we got go. that two days in a row, man. We can, we can utilize that and really, really get some great work done. Well, it's um, so funny when we did the At Home with Twitch. You remember, Greg, um, the biggest compliments we got, you know, because we're all older, but they would always be like, Man, y'all still sound good. And I, I have a stock answer. You know, it's like, you know, oh no, they say you still got it. That's the common. Yeah, you still right, got right, it. Right, I'm right, like, right. honey, let me tell you something. If I give it away, I can't work. So <laughs> I plan to keep it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. listen, guys, we're we're gonna have to close it. I said I was gonna close it because there were gonna be so many stories, but well, yeah, see, you but, said a half hour, Eddie. I, I was did. like, Eddie had lost his monkey mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's gonna be a half hour. I didn't expect everybody to be here, but I'm so glad everybody did. Thank you all so much for doing this, James. Thank you for showing up. Really appreciate it, James Strong. Our yeah, bassist. yeah, yeah, Jody man. Sims, right on. Drummer extraordinary. Jody, great seeing you. Extraordinary songwriter, yeah, extraordinary. You guys. Melvin Clark, guitarist, Akili awesome. Nixon, a vocalist, Andrew Brown. Everything. <laughs> Absolutely, Eddie. Philip Ingram, Gregory Williams, and again, producer Teresa Goss. Thank you again for coming up with a you. great idea. And thank you so much, y'all. Love you. Awesome. Love you. Awesome. Thank you and bless thank you, you all. Both of you.